Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Circle G here with my buddy John. So uh, we've had our Ultra Sabers for like what, about a year or so now? Uh, I'd say probably about a year. Yeah, just a little, maybe a little over. Uh, we've undergone such a large amount of changes. We've experimented with these sabers quite a bit. Uh, my friend here even designed a lot of his own sabers, so we kind of wanted to showcase those. And this is also, if you will, a re-review of the Ultra Saber. So we're going to talk firstly about the Ultra Sabers, our experience with them, and just kind of our thoughts on having them for a little over a year and how they've been holding up. After that, we're going to go over uh, some of his own custom sabers he's been uh, working on. So. Firstly, we'll go over these uh, Ultra Sabers. Where do you want to start with those? Well, I the machining and everything, the quality of the material is great. Um, I mean, it, it. I love the way the Ultra Sabers look and feel. They're they're slim. You can grab them, you know, in a in a good way. The customer service is pretty good too. Like, you know, we didn't have any issues with customer service. I mean, I had one issue with uh, a shipping. Um, and that was, I guess, partially on my fault. I ordered something right before Christmas and I had it shipped regular mail. I didn't know that that meant snail mail. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I guess regular mail. So uh, I ended up getting the part that I needed. Um, you know, Emery and the, the guys, they, you know, and the girls, they were really awesome and, and got me taken care of. But uh, my biggest issue is with the way everything is put into the Sabre. I ended up taking this thing apart and I now have it put into a different saber, which we'll go over in a little bit. You know, I like the MH MHS parts, which is modular hilt system. It's pretty cool. You can put a blade plug and everything like that. And when I looked, when I pulled this thing apart, inside of it, I looked at the switch and the switch was actually hot glued into <laughs> the saber and i was like no uh, no 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 and that's a very I, I, questionable I, design choice when i first seen it i i, I didn't believe it and I, I was like maybe there's a screw on it that that's just extra security well i had an issue with my switch i don't know if it was because of the wiring or because of the way it was soldered or what it was um, and Emery did offer to fix it. Uh, if I sent my saber back, I would have to, you know, pay the charges and everything. So I ended up not even dealing with it. So, you know, that's that. I ended up just putting everything from this thing into this mace window that you see right in front of me. Now, this thing is very beautiful. We'll go over a little bit more of it in a little bit, but uh, just, it's a Master Replica's 2005 Mace Windu. So that's where my Ultra Saber is actually at. It's inside of this. It's transformed into a better um, one, basically. And the reason being is because I love the Obsidian soundboard. The Obsidian soundboard that you can buy on Ultra Saber's website is really cool. You can do, I think it's like eight sound fonts on it. It's got, you know, Clash, Swing, and all that stuff. It's really cool, and it's really not that expensive. It's like a hundred and $25 for the V3 and then I think it's like an extra 10 or $15 for the V4 mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if you can buy the obsidian light board, which is actually what's in um, Josh's I'll let him tell you a little bit how, about his he's not so much into building them as I am I like taking stuff apart and fixing things <laughs> and Tinkering and you know putting mm -hmm. things in other things. So yeah. so I'll go over my experience of mine real quick. So, like you said, I really haven't dived into much of uh, the actual parts itself, but, um, so this is coming from probably like the average customer. The Saber holds up very well. I mean, just looking at this, I don't have a scratch on it. It still sounds really good. The speaker's great. I mean, just how loud this thing is. It's just right. <laughs> So it sounds really good. Um, I bought one of those belt clips for it and I wore that from time to time, but that just became more of a, a nuisance rather than looking cool because this was like beer leg and it's like doing this constantly. But that hey. was just me. <laughs> Maybe it was the way I was wearing it, I don't know, but it sounds really good. You know, Flash on Clash works really well. So it still holds up really well after all this time, um, but I do have to mention something. With my batteries, I think I must have replaced them more frequently the more time went on. I don't know if this is just me. Maybe it was the batteries I was getting, I don't know, so I'm not going to blame Ultra Savers, but I do kind of want y'all to know what my experience was of these. As time went on, I found myself getting more and more batteries for it. Uh, the first time I got the Saber, I didn't have to change the batteries for 
probably like five to six months. So that was very impressive. After that, I was started using it the same amount of time I was using it before, and the batteries died again probably a month later. So I replaced the batteries, and then a couple weeks later. Uh, so I just kind of left it, and then I went to test it back on again about a month later, and the batteries are just dead. So I don't know if mine started to just drain faster over time. I really don't know. Um, again, maybe it was the batteries, maybe it was something with the circuitry, it's hard to say. Just wanted to give y'all a, a heads up on what you might experience. So to me, that's kind of a little, little bit skeptical about them. I have heard that Saber Forge batteries that come with them do last a little bit longer, but it's tough to say. Uh, Ultra Sabers, they do come with their own batteries, and I think those do last for quite a while. But if you use any other batteries besides theirs, they just don't seem to work as well. Yeah, but. these are the these are the batteries that uh, Saber Forge puts in their sabers. Yeah. It's the same type of battery that I use for my sabers. It's a Panasonic 3400 milliamp and uh, 18650 battery. They last forever. Uh, you will notice that your saber will start to dim out and everything uh, after as you know the lower it gets uh, in charge. But uh, I have a quad battery charger, so I have I actually have one charging right over there. But I usually have you know like. I have these two that are ready to go, and then I have one that's in my saber right now. I'm going to show you um, that one in a second, but... You know, so, but... A lot of, yeah, a lot of those batteries do come with Saber Forge, and I think that's probably why their batteries last longer. And it just seems like a smarter design choice on their part, why they would include those, versus Ultra Sabers, where they just include standard AAA batteries. Now again, and the AAA batteries is for the Obsidian Light soundboard. The Obsidian Light soundboard, you cannot change the sound font on the Sabre. If you go to the Obsidian V4, which is what's in this right now, you will get the option to select your sound fonts, um, change your sound fonts on the computer, and you get two, I believe they're 3.7 volt rechargeable batteries, and it puts out a 7.4 volt charge. So uh, these ones are, this, this soundboard is a little bit brighter than this one because this one's using triple A's and they're not uh, unless you put some you know you put some rechargeable batteries in here this one comes with 7.4 volt output it's got actually a, a found that it's got a butt puck on it I'm if for you guys that don't know what a butt puck is it puts out a thousand milliamps of juice to the LED and it's a consistent uh, to keep the battery from overcharging the LED so once you've resistored everything and it's to keep your resistors from heating up and exploding in your saber and causing problems right, so right. but uh so let's just go ahead and show you that this is the like i said 2005 master replicas mace windu mm -hmm. now when i got this thing it had no batteries um, the entire thing was empty it was yeah, basically just well, a shell it had it actually it had the blade it had the mace windu blade it was all original except it didn't have the pommel and it didn't have the battery pack which was the speaker I have since put my own pommel on here and have the Obsidian soundboard inside. I'm still working on getting the uh, Covertech wheel to sit in right. I need to. I'm waiting for a washer to come in so that it, so that once I get it, I can paint this gold like it's supposed to be. Put the little black washer underneath it, and it'll sit the way it's supposed to. The one thing. The major that I've changed is this is no longer the activation switch for it. I've actually got a nice little hidden button that sits right here to turn this on and it's it's pretty loud with the, the way it's sitting in here. Mm. I have right now a Count Dooku uh, sound font. Um, with the Amethyst Violet, um, it's got a, I have a blade plug in it right now so that it's not blinding everybody but uh, go ahead and Show you and so when you're when you're looking at the saber you don't initially see that there's you know like a, a bump unless you start looking really close and you can see where you know I might have missed a little bit of glue on the, the rubber or something but if you initially look at the saber you don't know like and you're automatically gonna go for here and you're like well that's not a button and I like that I like that it's that it's hidden so you don't, you don't know where it's at right and then you can change the sound fonts Cool. And this is one thing that I really love about the uh, Ultra Saber soundboard is that you can change the sound fonts on it. Yeah, they have a huge selection you know. and it's actually really easy to install fonts. It literally takes like 30 seconds. So we'll go ahead and change through the sound fonts. 
That's the empty sound font. The, uh, the little beep is is a blank sound font, so you can just turn on the light without waking up your you know roommates or anything like that. If you <laughs> if you don't want to wake anybody up, but bring it to work and you're freaking everybody out. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll just keep it on the count. Do you one? It's... Confirmed. Only but thing yeah. is, it has a watermark on it, which is. I mean that that's okay. I like is. I like the I kind of like the watermark that sits on there, um, and the reason being is because it shows that it's an original Master Replicas uh, lightsaber, so mm -hmm. it gives it that authenticity and it gives it you know I mean I I, I like this saber. It, it is a big saber uh, or a big hilt, but you know I like it. I, it's you know, bulky, but it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. So on to the next one. Now this one is my prized possession. This, this is saber, a uh, fully hundred percent. Uh, customized saber uh, you can't get anywhere else so this is fully unique yes this is a one-of-a-kind I have officially named it the Kensi V1 uh, it has two looks uh, this is the Kensi V2 version and the reason is because I originally designed this with the choke and that is this right here so I will show I will go ahead and put this together and show you what it looks like with the choke that is the V1 this is the V2 look both designs are still completely unique I designed this on a computer on a 3D program that I had, and uh, I called uh, or emailed with um, Tim Yaskis at over at uh, Custom Saber Shop, and he's a really cool guy. He really took care of me and, and helped me out, gave me some suggestions on the part, on the length and stuff, and I sent him over the details, and he was able to go ahead and put it on a CNC and have it cut out. And and the piece that I'm talking about is actually this right here. It's the emitter. The rest of it is kind of a generic, you know, you can kind of look around and, and see like, you know, this one is a little bit different, but um, this right here, this part is completely unique. Uh, this one's 100% unique. You will not find something like this anywhere else unless they've stolen my design. <laughs> this is my emitter. Uh, this is the Kensi emitter. I've also made this saber completely modular, so I can take everything apart. All these parts right here will all fit in or on this saber. So I have three currently three LEDs. Uh, this is a 12 watt plus from Saber Forge Quad Cree Green. Very bright. It's very bright. And then this is a single Cree Blue from Ultra Sabers uh, and a Tri Cree White or Adigan Silver, I should say, from Ultra Sabers as well. Now I've got these all uniquely wired. You'll see that this one has two JST plugs, that's what they are. So that, that way I can put all of these in here, but I can also put these in here. Hmm. And this is the Amethyst Violet, that's what that is, from Ultra Sabers, it's in there. So I can take that LED out, put it in with this mix, and have four LEDs that I can potentially use. So let's go ahead and show you what the original Kensi looked like. So I'll go ahead and put this in here. Yeah, it's really nice being able to just have different parts for it. If you don't like the way one saber works, you don't have to order an entire new saber. You can order like a separate part for it. So if you're like, you know, I really don't look that hill. Let me just order another hill instead of having to get a whole new saber entirely. Exactly. And, and the reason why I went through Custom Saber Shop is because Tim Yaskis, he actually is very good with, uh, they, they have a very beautiful machine that, you know, creates these wonderful parts. And for this one in particular, I had all the threads on these parts done MHS compatible. So if I was to order something from Ultra Sabers, you know, like one of their emitters or one of their pommels, I can put their emitters and their pommels on this saber um, because it's MHS compatible. But there you go, that's what it looks like. This is the Ken CV1. This is what it originally looked, what I originally designed it to look like. Um, and then now I will go ahead and show you my prize possession. Indeed, you are powerful as the Emperor has foreseen. So I've got an illuminated AB switch. This is a momentary switch uh, running the Nano Biscotti V3 from Plector Labs. Irv is really good with what he does. Uh, makes a very wonderful sound card. It looks pretty cool. It's like a silver fire torch. Oh, <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can run two sound fonts on the Nano Biscotti V3. 
Uh, and I'll go ahead and switch over to the second one. Got a nice little Vader breathing. And uh, this is, I have this one set to be more of like an unstable blade. So let's go ahead and actually put a blade in real quick. So that way you can see, instead of it being in the, in the plug, but let me just show you how bright this thing is. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, yeah. it's really bright. Like, have you ever had like a camera flash in your eye and then you kind of like see uh, like dots in your eyes for a little bit? It's kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, it, very bright. So very bright. here's what it looks like on. Now, mind you, we have the light on, the window curtains are, are open. Um, so, I mean, you can see that it's, it's lit all the way to the tip of the saber. Um, and I don't know if you can see the flicker, but he's gonna shut the, I'm gonna shut the blinds real quick. So this will give you an idea. So, I mean, <laughs> and this it is- It lights up the whole so, place. And this is with, this Ultra Saber's blade right here is actually um, really old. Um, this actually got left in one of my buddy's cars and got sun damage. So, I mean, it, for it to be as bright as it is with this damaged blade, uh, you know, it's it's pretty awesome. But mm -hmm. uh, let me go ahead and put another one in real quick. Yeah. Josh has his blade. His blade's in a lot better condition than mine. Yeah, his is in way better condition than mine is. All right. A big... It looks purple in the video, but it's pretty blue. Yeah, th it's, this is... Quad Cree Green, and, but yeah, so it's got a nice little, you know, it, it, it this blade is a little longer than um, the other one, but uh, I'm waiting for Invader's Vault Blade right now, you know, we might do a, a review on that one as well, because we like doing reviews, mm -hmm. you know, giving you guys the truth about everything. And, we even have a couple of uh, custom ones up here too. Oh yeah, so these two right here, are actually, uh, this is my Black Series Luke. Looks really cool. And my Darth Maul. My Darth Maul actually don't have batteries in it, um, but uh, it's a this is a 2005 Darth Maul that I picked up for a, a steal, pretty much. I got it for, uh, I think I paid $50. Um, I had a, a guy and his son came over and um, wasn't the kid wasn't young he wasn't like you know I, I didn't hustle these people or anything he told me that he wanted seventy dollars for it and he brought it over a couple of the LEDs had gone out and he he said give me 50 bucks I gave him 50 bucks and called it a day and then I took it apart fixed the LEDs and but called bing, it another bing. day yep. so um, another thing I like is like I said, you can I can mix and match all these parts, so I can put this emitter on here if I wanted to. Um, it's almost like creating your own Legos where you it, can mix it and is. match it's, parts. It is. It's kind of like creating your own saber. So I mean, if I really wanted to, I can put this on here, uh, you know, and this is what the saber would look like. Now it looks totally different. Um, you know, I can take this emitter off, put that one on there, different saber again, mm -hmm. um, and then if I really want to make it look way different just do something like this this is what i call my my short saber take that off <laughs> this thing is really tiny once i once i do this oh yeah boom there we go so now we have this tiny little saber that is you know i mean it still works oh wow that really got way louder it's way louder with that pommel <laughs> um and then the only thing is, is with this setup, let me see if I can get it to sit in there right. Um, the LED kind of sits a little bit further up. It does give a cool effect with this. So this is a photon blade. It's a chemically enhanced blade that's meant to be run with a blue LED. And But we're going to go ahead and put it in with the green one just to kind of give you an idea of how it looks. Um, it's not as bright. I mean, you can clearly see that it's a little dull towards the end of the blade. That's yeah. because this isn't diffused for an inhale LED. 
if I had it made for, if I had this blade ready for an inhale LED, it'd look a little different. It works very well with the blue LED. So let's go ahead and set this thing up the way it's supposed to be so that we're not trying to blow our eardrums anymore. Yeah. So when it comes right. down to it, would you say uh, custom sabers or ultra sabers would be a better choice? I, for people that, if you're not looking to spend a lot of time and you know make your own saber if you're if you're a person that you know you just want to buy it ready now you know and don't get me wrong i've done that too i've, I've bought a few of my sabers just outright uh they were already ready to go for example the two that are sitting right here behind us uh those were both um bought those ready to go you know i didn't spend any extra money on them to have you know more bells and whistles mm -hmm. but if you're looking to get a different experience and you know get some you know building experience i'd say build it build your own saber you know see how it goes you know try it out mm -hmm. and and give it you know give it a shot because yeah. you might end up making a saber that you fall in love with for example this one right here i designed a saber and this is this is my baby i almost thought about selling it um because it was a one of a kind uh and you know i, I know i can get money for it but I decided not to. I, I decided to keep it because, you know, I I put a lot of work into this. I spent it. It took me probably about a month or two to put this thing together. This is the photon blade with the blue LED. Now this one gives it in the camera. You can't really see it, but it gives it more of like a teal blue in the middle with a green outline. Mm -hmm. um, it's like tea. Yeah. It's Teal. It's hard to describe. I just want to show you one last thing. This is what I originally put everything together for and it was so that I could have a string blade saber. Mm. And uh, that is one of the things that took me a very long time to, to build was my string blade. It took me uh, a few tries. I, I, I practiced and practiced and practiced and made a few different blades and had a couple mess ups and you know <laughs> just about threw everything out and that's what the hammer is there for. That's that's not to to use to you know work on things. That's that's the smash stuff. That's the smash stuff. <laughs> that's my smash stuff hammer right there. String blade, <laughs> all the way to the to the yep. end, um, and I have flash on clash. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Custom sabers, I think they're better than ultra sabers, but ultimately it comes down to personal preference. Yeah, so you know, give the don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe, guys. We will see you next time. See you next time. <laughs> Stupid.